Hello, this is Christy Gotovan, and today I would like to start a series of videos or maybe an entire course on InDesign with a special emphasis on creating a portfolio, an art portfolio. Recently, I've had to create one portfolio like this because my daughter is hoping to study art at university. So during the application process, it was necessary to create a portfolio of her artwork until now in secondary school and A-level work. And then we had to organize all these art uh, artworks into a portfolio to present to universities as part of the application process. And due to this year's COVID situation, a lot of the application has happened online anyway, and the portfolio had to be sent in digitally. And also, if there was an interview, that was usually, you know, online. So we had to prepare the portfolio in a nice, uh, in a nice way so that it's easy to browse, but it also uh, shows the best of her work. So let me show you what we have done. So let me show you what we will achieve in this course or uh, tutorial series. And so this is the portfolio, of course, a title page with a one of the preferred or, or her favorite elements, which is a sunflower and her name, of course, 2020. And then we had one page that shows a summary of all the works that are included in the portfolio. This portfolio is an A3 format, but you know, when you send it in digitally, it doesn't really matter the size really, unless you're going to print this. So we created an A3 format because we also wanted to keep the option of being able to print this if we wanted to. And we indeed printed it online somewhere. So we had it sent to us and it looks gorgeous. So in this course, I'm going to walk through the basic functionality of InDesign, Adobe InDesign. And if you don't have InDesign, you can download a trial version, fully functional, I think, from Adobe. So we will be using the latest version at the time of recording, which is going to be InDesign 2020, part of Creative Cloud. You can get, I think, a cheaper version for students. If you're a student, you can you can get a cheaper version. And really, you just you can subscribe for just one month and do your portfolio if if the trial version is not enough for you. And I know this time of year, all the students applying for art courses at universities, they have to prepare their uh, portfolio. So this tutorial is going to be not necessarily rushed, but it's going to be just using the functions in InDesign we need to create this portfolio. We're not going to go into very much detail and systematically take InDesign and teach all of the functions in it exhaustively. We're just going to focus on the main things we need to use from InDesign to create this particular type of portfolio. And I'm pretty sure most of the portfolios out there are going to be similar to this. You're going to have, you know, title uh, category pages, perhaps with with, you know, personal projects. And then you are going to have each big art um, piece on a page, maybe with a little description next to it, maybe a picture to show the scale. And, uh, you know, just just a simple design. Um, to, to do the the uh, portfolio to present to your uh, during your application process. So if this is what you're trying to do now and you don't know where to turn, this course is for you. And really, I'm not going to spend, like I said, a lot of time detailing all of the functions. I'm just going to help you get the job done. So as you can see here, I'm scrolling through my daughter's portfolio. You can see the, the type of work she's doing, sketches and um, you know, note, uh, we even took pictures of her notebook and, and sketchbook. So we, we, we use some of those because some of the artwork you need to present, I'm sure you need to present some of the uh, sketches you're doing and study sheets and all that stuff. And then, uh, she's actually gone and done a bit of, uh, sort of comic books, you know, so you have a few pages showing like your sketches and then describing, you know, a bit of text here, describing what you're looking at, and then showing the finished product, like a, a little comic here, and um, her portfolio that we presented 
to the university. So we're going to use this as a way to learn how to make our own. So I hope this course, this uh, series of tutorials is going to be useful to you. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments for every video, every part of the video. You can also find links to her online portfolio in the description and also links to get Adobe if you want to get a trial version of this. So you can you can use this tutorial and just follow along and build your portfolio. In the end, we will export the portfolio. So we will cover these are the topics we will cover in this course. First of all, we will look at InDesign create a new document, prepare the document, prepare the files that are going to go in, all the artwork. So it's very important to think about the stuff you're going to put in just before you even start organize your content. This is one of the main uh, main things before you even go into InDesign. It's uh, important that you have all of your artwork digitized. So we will look at how to do that and also we will look at laying out the page, importing the graphics, creating the graphic boxes, putting all that stuff on the page and, you know, changing text font, creating the layout, managing pages, all of these things to end up with a finished product, your finished portfolio, and then exporting that portfolio digitally, making it so that you can send it to, to a university for a, a you know, application or if you want to print it, export it for print so you can print it online and then exporting it as a reduced file so that you can maybe even email it to someone or send it using one of the online transfer uh, services so the file isn't huge. And, you know, depending on how you scan or you photograph your content, the files could be quite huge. So we will be creating a finished PDF file with your entire portfolio ready to send to a university or application process or teachers or whatever. So during this process, what we did was we first started with the artwork. So let me show you what we did just to start. So you can see here, these are all of the folders with all of the artwork that we had. So one thing that I uh, would like to emphasize is, um, the better your content is going in, the better your images are, the better your scans or photos are, the better your portfolio is going to look. So what we did was because a lot of Diana's works were quite big, I mean, A2, A1 pieces, they were not, you know, they were impossible to scan using a conventional desktop computer scanner. So we had to take pictures of it. What we did was for the ones that we could, we, we of course scanned using a scanner, but then the ones that were too large for a scanner, we had to take pictures of. So this is probably one of the tricky parts because we had to take many pictures of them. And of course you can take pictures using your phone as you know, so you have to have a very good phone to take pictures or you could ask a friend with a DSLR camera to take a picture like a Canon or a, you know, um, Sony or whatever, take pictures of your artwork in a well lit environment. So I, I'm not being, going to be able to show you how we took the pictures. We basically took the pictures in our kitchen. We, we put the lights on, we bought two lights on a stand and we pointed those at the artwork and then we took pictures. So let me show you. Um, this is one of the pieces or this one. So you can see we created folders here with all of the different shooting uh, sessions. So this uh, this artwork, for example, you can see we took pictures of the artwork going from the top to the bottom. And then finally, we created a stitch using Photoshop. So I'm going to show you how to stitch together like a puzzle pieces of the artwork that you take pictures of. So because we couldn't put the scanner to use for this, this, these artworks, we had to take pictures of it. So this is the full size artwork. If I open this really quick, this is the, uh, the picture, the, the full size image, but then we started, we took uh, full, full size pictures of it. And then we took, uh, in from top to bottom, we took a few from top to bottom, like four shots from the top, the middle, 
sort of lower side and the bottom and then we stitch those together then we took another series just to make sure that my hand wasn't because i was holding my dslr my camera in my hand and and just going shoot 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 going up up from the top to the bottom sometimes your your hand moves or you're you know shaking and stuff like that maybe shaky you, you get one of the shots if one of the shots is shaky then your picture is going to be blurry even if you stitch it together one part of that picture is going to be blurry so it's quite important to have like a one day of shooting if you can't hire obviously you're a student you can't really spend money hiring a professional photographer which we couldn't do so i had to take the pictures we just took a one day and put took all the artwork all the photos all the pictures together all of the paintings and we shot all of them in slices and then we stitched them together in photoshop which was another day of work so as you can see there's a lot of work involved in just preparing your artwork now if you're happy your artwork isn't that large if your artwork is up to maybe a3 format you can find scanners that scan a3 and that is ov obviously better because you can scan your artwork maybe 300 to 600 dpi and of course you're going to end up with very good quality because you don't have to worry about blurriness stitching them together you don't have to worry about camera lighting and all of that because the scanner does all of that for you but if you don't if you if your artwork is much larger than that then you're going to have to photograph it so the advice i have is find a very well lit room uh, create a little mini studio if you can get an easel and place the picture on the easel and then take photos of it and do not be i mean digital photos take as many as you need take uh one full size take a few full size pictures from afar then go closer and take chunks of it make sure you don't miss one of the portions and then save those as well and then you can stitch them in photoshop and i'm going to show you how that is done and then you can see here we have six versions of each photo four versions or you know so when we were happy with that so like this one for example we took six different types of photos for it we took the full size one and then we took top to bottom and then we took a, another one top to bottom and then we started doing half and half on the top and the middle and then we took more and then finally we took another one because i was not happy with it so in the end i stitched all of these together and i ended up with one good version so if i'm showing you this now you can see these are the uh, different components different slices and then if i show you the final stitch this was the final stitch that we liked the best in terms of lighting and in terms of um, you know sharpness so if i zoom in on this one in photoshop here you can see it's quite quite high resolution you can see the brush strokes here so uh, if i zoom into this is 100 percent so this is the real size of this uh, photo uh, of this artwork. You can notice that here on the side, it is a little blurry. So even this one was not 100% perfect. If you don't have a professional studio and a professional photographer, then you're going to have to do a best effort thing. So this is what we ended up with. This is the version we used in the final work. And it turns out it was quite good. I mean, A3 this painting was i believe a1 size and it ended up being printed on an a3 sheet of paper pretty much half the sheet it's almost a4 size so uh, this was the version we used so it looked quite good and when we printed it and the print arrived it was quite good it looked very sharp very nice just want to emphasize before you start it's quite important that you have your content digitized your artwork digitized and even if you're not going to use all of them digitize all of them because then it's very easy to use them online as well if you want to create an online portfolio and also incorporate them in your artwork portfolio this is the first advice digitize your content and then the second piece of advice is before we start plan out your content these are all the artworks that we are using in this portfolio she had much more than this but of course we couldn't use all of them because then 
whoever's looking at your portfolio might be bored. So you really want to be using the best works, the best artwork that represents your your style, your particular style. And also the artworks that are going to be part of your portfolio should reflect the um, sort of the course you're trying to apply for to show that it's relevant to that course. So in this case, Diana wants to study character design and concept art, movies or, or, or computer games and all of that. So then she does have a lot of flowers, of course, from her previous years. But then the actual work that she really wanted to emphasize was these comics, this character development and this person that she designed, this character she designed and uses it in a in a comic. Of course, we featured and explained a lot of the story behind this character. And of course, you're showing the other work to just show the sort of the range of work you can do. But of course, you want to show the stuff that you want to study. I don't want to give you this advice so much because, of course, I'm sure you have received plenty of advice from your teachers and from the application websites for the particular university. So let's dive into InDesign, how to create an art portfolio using InDesign. And I'm not saying InDesign is the only tool you can create this with. You can um, use other tools and some of them are even free. Personally, I like to use InDesign because it's it's a you know professional tool that has all of the functionality that I need. I also like to use Zara Designer Pro for graphics and that one is also able to do layout and print quality graphics. So let's start. This has been a very long introduction. I'm sorry for that. I'm just trying to lay the groundwork for what's coming. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy these tutorials or you find them useful, share them with your friends, uh, subscribe to my channel, like it and comment. If you have any questions, let me know and I'm very happy to create a specific video showing a specific problem or solution. If you find that I haven't covered anything here, or I've made glossed over some stuff that, you know, I should have maybe covered more in depth. So thank you for watching again. See you on the next one.